In many countries, women fall victim to violent traditions, and tonight's episode investigates one of them, the practice of killing women in the name of honor. Our story is set in Pakistan, where the rate of these so-called honor killings appears to be on the rise. The government of Pakistan has outlawed the practice and has recently established a national commission to better address problems faced by Pakistani women. But the violence continues. Pakistan is by no means the only country where honor killings occur. But we chose to go there for one reason above all others, a young woman named Zahida Praveen. She is a survivor of an attempted honor killing, a mother of three, an inspiration to women in her country and to victims of violence all over the world. Those among you who think it is right to kill your wife if she sleeps with another man, raise your hands. I'm Michael Davey on assignment in Pakistan. Here, a man can kill a woman and the crime will often go unpunished. It's a practice called honor killing. My name is Zaheda Parveen. I am 29 years old. I have survived. Zahida's husband mutilated her and left her to die. But she lived, and she did what few Pakistani women dare to do. She fought back, demanded justice, and won an astonishing victory. This is her story, and the story of campaigners like her. It's one of courage, love, and the fight for women's rights. There is a reason to kill. She is our property, our pride. And if she is sleeping with another man, then God says you can kill her. It's a matter of our honor. A woman is to be under my command. My goat, my sheep, my donkeys, my women. My brother set me on fire because he saw me talking on the street to my cousin and he thought we were having an affair. We never get used to the fact that a woman gets burned every day. God knows how many of them. She was a whore in our eyes who deserved to be killed. First we murdered one girl, then after two years we killed another, then we killed one more. These are all arranged planned murders. I don't agree with this assessment at all. That's not the case. Do you think that you were going to die? I was sure I was going to die. I just wanted to stay alive so I could tell my family who did this to me. I didn't want this to happen to any other woman. And I will tell my story. I will tell the truth so this doesn't happen again. <laughs> This is Pakistan, a country steeped in traditional practices dating back thousands of years. I'm here to learn about one of them, a custom known as honor killing, in which the murder of women is condoned, ironically, on moral grounds. Pakistan's new government has condemned honor killing, but the practice continues unabated. More than three women a day are murdered here, many just on suspicion of behaving dishonorably. In what ways are women prejudiced against? In what ways are women oppressed in Pakistan? Traditionally, she is like a, like a machine. She is like a machine who bears children. And when the duty is done, she is kicked out of the house. Women who are simply seen with men outside their family are often deemed dishonorable and killed. Ironically, many rape victims are also murdered for bringing shame to their families. So, Nahida, let me get this straight. In Pakistan, if you're a woman and you get raped and you come forward to the police, but you can't prove that you've been raped, you can go to jail for 10 years for adultery. Yes, this, this, this is possible and this has been happening. Islam is using an excuse here for everything. 
as long as you play five times a day, you can do whatever you like, and that's just not the way it is. In Pakistan, men often only have to claim their attacks are for honor, and the police will usually look the other way. As a result, these crimes appear to be on the rise. In this day and age, I'm the man, and I can rape a woman and rape another one after that. I don't have to be scared of being punished. 29-year-old mother of three, Zahida Praveen, survived an attempted honor killing. She's one of the only women in Pakistan to successfully prosecute the attacker, her husband, Mehmood Iqbal. So, Mehmood, why are you in jail today? Well, I am here because of the case involving my wife. On the way to a friend's house, I stopped in a small village. I saw Zahida in bed with another man. It happened at night, right after he returned from doing his prayers. He took the children and locked them in the other room. He then started beating me with the handle of an axe. She continued to tell me that she did not know who he was. He hanged me upside down and beat me until my ribs broke. He screamed at me and picked up a knife. I did this for honor. Everyone does things for their honor. First, he cut off my ears. Then, he carved off my nose. With pliers in my mouth, he cut my tongue. And then, he took out my eyes with the knife. I cut her ears off because she never listened to anything I said. Yet, she would listen to others, even all the men she slept with. I took her eyes out because she would see things that I did not approve of. The worst thing was, I really cared for her and loved her. He tried to cut my tongue so I could not testify. Thank God I could speak and testify. I was once a pretty woman. Now I can't even go for a walk outside. People stare. I can feel their eyes on me. I hear them whisper. I hear the rumors and lies. And I can hear them gasp when they see my face. Do you deserve to be punished? No. I don't think so, because I did it for my honor and pride. It got really quiet and then I fainted. He threw me on the bed and opened all of the ropes that he had tied on me. He thought I was dead. When I heard my son crying, I began screaming. I was screaming, someone help, please take him out. And then the neighbors came. When they saw my face, they screamed. Zahida was three months pregnant with her husband's child when he did this to her. The baby survived. World Diary deals with mature and at times graphic subject matter. This program is not intended for younger viewers. Your discretion is advised. Sadly, Zahida Paveen's success in getting her husband jailed hasn't yet made it any easier for other women to claim their rights. A report commissioned by a previous Pakistani government states that the average Pakistani woman is born into near slavery, leads a life of drudgery, and dies invariably in oblivion. Not surprisingly, the same government suppressed its own report. Pakistan's new leader has publicly condemned honor killing and has promised reform, but so far, little has changed. General, I've, I've spent the last three weeks with women who've had their eyes cut out, their noses cut off, who've been doused in kerosene and set on fire by their husbands. It, it seems to be a big problem in this country. Okay. Are you tackling this problem? Well, again, I'm, I'm really amazed. Where all have you been going? I, I really, uh, I'm sure, obviously, if you're looking for such incidents, you are being taken to such incidents. Uh, but wherever you are being taken, if you think that this is what is happening uh, to a majority of the women in Pakistan, I'm, I'm afraid that is not the case. Honor-related or not, crimes against women are all too common here. 
more than 70% of Pakistani women suffer domestic violence, according to a recent report by Human Rights Watch. Most women here don't even know they have rights. Not surprising in a country where most of the women are illiterate. I'm in southern Pakistan, heading north to an area where I've heard that women are killed by their husbands, their brothers, their fathers on an almost daily basis. I'm going up there to try and find some of the people who are involved in committing these crimes and hopefully they'll help me understand why this type of thing is going on. It's these rural areas where most of the population lives and where the treatment of women is most oppressive. Illiteracy and poverty plague these people and religious fundamentalism thrives here, creating an apparently harmonious society, at least amongst the men. And finding men around here who've killed women is easy. Honor killing is a tradition which these three men have practiced, claiming it's encouraged by Islam. But many of the local religious leaders who promote this belief are themselves illiterate and don't understand what the Holy Scriptures actually say. One of the three killers was about to invite me in until he realized his wife had unexpectedly stepped out of her room. He then took me to the part of the house where he killed his 15-year-old daughter. He says he saw her sleeping with a boy there. Masood, could you please ask him to explain what happened the day he killed his daughter? Did you did you shoot her in the head or in the back when you shot her? In here. How many? Once? Twice? Just once. Can I please speak to your wife to find out how she feels about this? No, no. No? Why not? No. Does she have the choice if she wanted to talk to me? Would you let her talk to me? No. Thank you. Thank you. The other two killers then gave me the rationale behind their murders. This is how we see it in our Muslim belief. If we see these immoral things and do not take action, then you are a pig, not a Muslim. It is not a question of manhood, but of being dishonored. We would have been the laughing stock of the community. The cruelty practiced daily against women in the rural areas has been hushed up in the past. But now the media is focusing attention on the issue, largely through the story of Zahida Paveen. Six months after being attacked by her husband, Zahida gave birth to a healthy baby girl. Zahida was now blind and constantly in pain, but she was determined to fight back. For week after week, she made a four-hour bus journey to the courts and refused her husband's family's attempts to bribe her to drop the case. I stood up for my rights because this could happen to other women. I wanted to set an example for others and not let him get away with what he had done to me. The odds must have seemed insurmountable for Zahida, but she had one enormous asset, her brother Shakir. He joined her to fight the case. I'm outside the courts in Rawal Pindi, and I cannot imagine how difficult it would be to be a woman here seeking justice. There are no women here. This place is entirely dominated by men. I, I, I couldn't imagine being a rural woman who normally does never leave her house without a male relative coming here and saying, I've been raped, or my husband wants to kill me because he thinks I'm having an affair. It would be impossibly hard. I, I have a totally newfound respect for Zahida and her bravery, and it must be very, very intimidating. 